Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As Pastor Chris mentioned, we're continuing our series. We started last week with the prophecy candle. Uh, Pastor Chris shared a bunch there. Today we have, uh, we have the Bethlehem candle. Uh, and I want to start out, kind of like as I was talking about with the kids, uh, about road trips. I saw this picture reminding me of taking road trips. This is kind of right. This is how we used to do it back in the day, right? You get the atlas out. You'd highlight the, highlight the route. Am I, anybody kind of get a couple nods of the head? Sure, right? We did this. This is how we used to do it, right? Uh, I do love taking trips. My truck, some of you saw this maybe online. I just locked 300,000 miles with the truck. I'm pretty proud of that, actually. So, and if you've been hearing me talk about it, sorry, but you get to hear it one more time. Um, this is how we... I think about it, though. The road trips, you got to take the highlighter out, you mark that stuff up. I, I know, I remember, too, AAA used to make the triptych. Remember, you used to get the little booklet with your trip marked out, special stuff along the way. Maybe you did that. Um, now, of course, we've got apps for those things. I use the Waze app, uh, real-time traffic info. It saved me some time the other day coming back from Fort Worth. Uh, it got me around an accident, probably saved me an hour or so, as bad as, as, bad as all that was. Um, Road trips are fun, and it's the journey, the stuff you get to see, especially long road trips, the stuff you get to see, going to so many places. Hopefully, as we talked to the kids this morning, you heard talking about going to different places. As you think about the story that Pastor Chris read, though, I'm not so sure that Mary and Joseph were as excited about the road trip as, as I might get. Let's think about their trip for a little bit. Mary's pregnant. Right? And this is about a 90-mile trip, we think. Uh, right? You're going from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The terrain's not that easy. So uh, it would have taken about four to five days likely for them to walk. And since I had a map earlier, let's do another map. Maybe you can see some of this. I don't know. The one you got Nazareth at the top, Bethlehem there at the bottom. If they take the trip straight south, what are they going to run into? You got mountains. Okay, that they're going to have to do. So that means ups and downs and twists and turns, all sorts of stuff. Not good for, for, for Mary. Uh, the other trip's going to take a little bit longer, but it's a lot flatter. It takes them through this river valley. Uh, so, so maybe that would have been a little bit easier for them to do. We don't know how they went, but we do know they had to take this trip. It wasn't going to be easy. There was going to be all sorts of struggles. And matter of fact, I love how, you know, we always show this picture of Mary on the, on the, on the donkey. There is no indication for sure. We, have, we like to think she did ride a donkey. It would make it a little bit easier for her, but, but we just don't know many details. But they took the trip to Bethlehem. And again, that's the name of that second candle that we have here today. This is a reminder of the journey, of this trip, the preparation, and all that went into this journey for Mary and Joseph. It's also called the faith candle and some other setups. And I like the idea of marrying those two ideas together, this Bethlehem, this trip candle, with this idea of faith, this journey in faith. And it kind of resonated with me because I think, and maybe as you start thinking about it together, uh, a journey, a trip, is an act of, of faith in itself. There's so much faith and trust that goes into putting a trip together and making, making it happen. Pastor Chris's story last week of going to his grandmother's house, very, very good, wonderful story, excitement and anticipation that they had. Uh, but, but think about the faith and trust that's involved for any trip that we get, whether it's by, and pardon the reference here, planes, trains, or automobiles, right? Some of you will catch the movie reference. Whatever it is you take, it's an act of faith. You have to trust, for example, whatever the vehicle is, that it's going to work, it's going to get you there on your journey. You trust and hope that the journey will be without incident. You trust and hope that everything's going to be well at the place that you go to. And we do know, all too sadly, that uh, that's not always the case for those things. How many stories do we know of vacations run amok because of troubles on the journey? Things not being quite right when you get there. Uh, my trip this week coming back from Fort Worth uh, on Friday, I was at a funeral, came back, I went through if you go down 77, you're familiar with a few of the towns that you have to be careful in. I got pulled over in Redbud. See, you know. And I was worried. Uh, tail light cover had fallen completely off. I don't know where. Some place between Fort Worth and Redbud. I made it out with the morning, by the way. I thought for sure I was toast. I thought it was going to be done. I didn't know what had happened. Um, 
Stuff that you're not expecting to happen is going to happen. Trips and things will change. Good things can happen. Unfortunately, we know bad things can happen. We heard a story just this past week, uh, past couple of weeks, of a family grieving at this time because of a tough story for a trip. Our life journeys are the same way. There's going to be changes to the things that we have. We have all sorts of plans, things that we expect are going to happen. Some people lay their life plans out altogether. Some kind of take it as it comes. Whatever the case, there's going to be changes along the way. When I was a senior in high school, I just knew I was going to be a marine biologist. That's what it was going to be. I loved the beach, loved all sorts of stuff about the ocean. That's what I was going to do. I did one semester at Texas A&M Galveston, and that was it. My marine biology career was done. Moved back home, moved back into dad's. Um, the changes came. I went from marine biology to landscape architect to architect to biology to botany to a break from school where I was kind of done with things. That was at seven years, by the way, just about six years, I think. Uh, finally, in that break time, I decided I wanted to be a pastor. Needed a degree, so went back to school and uh, with some talk with some other folks, end up with the horticulture degree down to, from Tarleton. Uh, got that, was ready to go to seminary, or so I thought. Got to talking to my home pastor, finally decided, actually wasn't quite ready. That was a hard thing to tell. Again, the journey's changing at each step of the way. I had to tell people at home who'd expecting me to go to St. Louis, go to the seminary, now it's not going to happen. Uh, got to work at one of the city golf courses, worked for the city of Arlington. Two and a half years later, uh, felt the tug finally to go to, Saint, go to St. Louis. Sometime in my first year there at St. Louis, uh, I thought I made a huge mistake. All these other guys were studying all sorts of stuff. I was just the turf jockey, the golf course guy, the one who could talk to you about plants and grass and all that kind of stuff. Uh, had lunch with my pastor. I said, I'm not so sure. These other guys have studied philosophy and history and all this stuff all sorts of theology. I'm just a horticulture guy. And I was lost. I felt so lost so many different times. But I hope I never forget what he said to me that day at lunch. It was at a Chinese restaurant place. And he said these words, never discount the journey that God has taken you on. Never discount the journey God has taken you on. God has a purpose for each moment along the way, or at the very least we understand and know that he can use whatever it is that is happening. It is his timing and purpose. Now, I don't remember what I said back to him, but it struck me and it stuck out. And I remember it was nearly, nearly three years later, or probably nearly two years later, uh, I was on my internship. Uh, I was visiting with a lady at the hospital. I think her name was Ruth. She was in somewhere in her 80s. She was pretty sick, but we were able to still talk some. And we got to talk about gardening, and she was going on about the stuff in her garden, and um, because of some of my background, anyway, we talked and talked, and at that moment, for whatever reason, the words of that pastor, my pastor, came back into my, set, my, into my head. Don't discount the journey that God has taken you on. And it helped me see that even a guy with a horticulture degree uh, who had no philosophy, theology, or whatever background could, could enter in, and God could use in those moments to connect with his people and to share Christ's love. And it was a very important moment for me to hear that, hear that advice. And it got me thinking, and I like this picture. I think of a journey here. All right, you've got your path there on the left. Kind of doubles back on itself. But you can imagine that as that path goes, and perhaps that goes off into the distance. And each of our lives are this way, and you've got the hills, and you're going to have some moments when the journey takes you uphill. It's going to be hard. There's going to be moments coming down the hill, moments in the valleys there, moments when the wind is at your back and the journey is good. There's going to be times when the journey and things are, and those are struggling at you, times when it's going to be raining or sunny, all sorts of stuff. The, the times of the journey, the events of the journey will change. But all of it is part of the journey. All of it is part of how God is taking us through, and God is ultimately guiding us. And you see, as we get back to this picture of Mary and Joseph, they were on a journey. But even in God's grand story, this was only part of the journey. Mary and Joseph had a very significant part, but it was only a small section of the whole journey that God was on. 
I love Pastor Chris's description last week about this anticipation and excitement and, and God's excitement at this journey. God has been seeing this fold out for centuries. God was excited, and he wasn't hiding the story. He wasn't giving little hints. He was giving us bold promises throughout all of Scripture about this journey that he has planned. And you heard from Isaiah today. Again, Isaiah's story is coming hundreds of years before these events of Mary and Joseph. And he gives this great promise. This is just a part of what you heard read from, from Ray today. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. And let, let's just stop there for a second. Make sure you get what is being said here. How does it usually go if a wolf lays down with a lamb? How good for the lamb? Not so good. He's describing a different world here. If the wolf will lay down with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat. Okay, and he goes on with all these things. The calf, the lion together, the fatted calf together. There's no indication, right, of the bad stuff that we might be thinking of happening. Where in the world does this happen? He is showing us a future where these, the prey and the, and, the, and the predator and the prey are laying down together in peace. That is not the world we live in. He's describing this future world that is full of peace, the world that God is bringing, the one that Jesus is going to usher in. And notice what he says there together, a little child shall lead them. Verse 10, he says, the nation shall inquire and his resting place shall be glorious. God has been describing this journey and making promises about what the destination is like and the beautiful peace that is coming. This Advent season, I, I don't know where you are on whatever your journey is. I know some parts of some of your journeys I know some of you are incredibly high points on the mountain right now, and the joys and the, and the thankfulness are high. I know some of you are in some deep, dark valleys, and each day is an absolute struggle. Each day wondering if you're going to get out of this valley. Will it ever open up, and will the sun shine again? Mary and Joseph had to have had some of those very questions God spoke to them before the journey happened, right? He knew the struggles that were going to be going through their head. He sent angels to them to speak to them, to remind them that this is going to be okay. He knew they needed to hear from him that this was his doing. Now, I'm no angel bringing a message, but I, but I do bear a message from God, and really just a reminder from him that this journey you're on is your journey with him. You, you may not be heading to Bethlehem, where this, but you have your own journey, and whatever it is, whatever struggles, whatever highs you're on, God is there with you. He has promised so much to be with you on this journey, and you know the end. Wherever you're at, you know the end of the journey is with Him, and we can be sure of that promise because it is from this journey that Mary and Joseph took, where there would be a child born, not just any child, but a child that would lead us to peace, the child that was peace, because that was Jesus' journey. And Jesus' journey does mean life, because the journey would go from this place, from Bethlehem, would continue to Jerusalem, and finally to the cross. Whatever it is that's happening, God has us. Trust him. Lean on him. And whatever has happened, don't discount the path that God has chosen. He is with you always. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Please rise.